It's been almost three years since the death of BBC Three, a truly unique approach to broadcasting to young adult audiences that was not only wildly successful but fondly memorable, which is why its slow, painful demise, started in 2014 and continuing to this day, feels all the more excruciating. But now this brings up a different question. What is the state of BBC Three today? Has this internet folly doomed the BBC's hopes of reaching younger, more diverse audiences in future as the rest of its output skews noticeably older? I explore that in this unexpected part 2 of my retrospective on BBC3. So if we're going to take stock of the current state of BBC3, we have to start in the obvious locations. The website which the BBC moved the channel to, and the promised programming slots on BBC1 and 2 for the long form content. So how are those doing? The BBC3 website, so heavily promoted back in 2016, is becoming more and more of a blog as the remains of the long-form content get further merged into the depths of the iPlayer. The linear runs on BBC1 and 2 contribute basically an hour or two at night at most, as already predicted with 2 using the 10 o'clock slot when the news is on on 1 and 1 not doing their part until well after 11.30, at least during the week I'm making this video, with no opportunities for repeats whatsoever unless you happen to have a DVR or fast enough internet for the iPlayer, which aren't necessarily guarantees, though it's not like they're doing anything else with that airtime. The scheduling, not to even mention the lack of solid branding that a dedicated channel provides, makes this all feel like a token afterthought, out of sight and out of mind in favor of maintaining both respective channels' status quo. BBC4 continues to exist as it always has, and as suspected, never really seemed under threat, and CBBC, which BBC3 timeshared with, eventually got its hours extended to 9pm for more repeats of their stuff, and afterwards CBBC uses the overnight airtime for their own off-air loop. The former BBC3 audience is isn't really there anymore. Not because they've all gone to the internet, but because they were pushed away by the public broadcaster that, in addition to seniors, the middle-aged, and children, should be representing them too. The BBC has no real brand or channel on TV for audiences too old for CBBC, but too young for BBC One or Two, which will continue to contribute to the sentiment of the former BBC Three audience that the BBC no longer has anything for them. That the BBC no longer has a place for them. That's not the message you want to be sending to the audience who will someday be old enough to be the the typical age of a BBC viewer, because if you let them leave with that kind of opinion about you, they're probably not going to come back. BBC Radio 1, the lone traditional media outlet the BBC has for younger audiences now, just can't hold the whole youth skewing effort up alone. And it shouldn't, really. The BBC have both TV and radio assets under their purview, and they should be using both to better reach all the audiences they're trying to attract, young adults included. The commercial channels that aim at young adults don't care enough or can't imagine risking the ad revenue to trying to capture the part of the BBC3 crowd that wasn't just there for Family Guy, and it probably hurts for those who are involved to see that the channel that gave so much young British talent a shot is slowly withering away. BBC3 died a martyr in the long-standing gulf between the young and the old. It was a truly unique piece of British television history, and it was an ultimately successful attempt to reach the young audiences the BBC has had so much trouble getting, an opportunity they may never get again. Even for me, speaking hypothetically, if BBC3 the real BBC3, not the online imposter, returned to the airwaves tomorrow, it'd probably have to prove itself all over again. And that endeavor isn't going to be easy, or even successful necessarily. And fortunately, it seems there are many in line to follow this dangerous example. Just months after BBC3's closure, Germany's public broadcasters ARD and ZDF closed their respective youth skewing channels, Eins Plus and ZDF Kultur, and merged them into the joint online service Funk which seems to have similarly devolved, albeit much more stylishly and with much more of a video focus, and just this past summer, France Television's main youth channel, France 4, basically France's answers to CBBC and BBC3 on a single channel, was threatened with closure, with the remaining three split between France 5 and online. BBC3, just 13 years and a week old when it died, barely lived to be a teen itself, but its death was a terrible case of jumping the gun on the BBC's part, even if more younger audiences are watching content online. The general consensus is that it will still be a few generations before we detach ourselves from the TV entirely, in the way the BBC was probably envisioning when they announced BBC3 was moving online. Now BBC3 is going to end up lost in the noise that is all the media and content that exists on literally the entire internet, versus the medium of television that offered it more exposure and, given the barriers to entry are so high there, far less competition. Case in point being that the last BBC3 show I had heard about was the drama miniseries 13, promoted just at the time of the TV channel's closure. While I still want to check that out, as the story sounds really interesting, 
That was two years ago, and I wasn't even aware that the BBC were even still producing long-form content under the BBC3 brand. This problem is only going to get worse thanks to the weakening presence of BBC3's long-form work online, in favor of the short-form content that's more easily shareable on social media. In the end, it's the inane, pointless short-form content that will likely prove to dominate the image of modern BBC3, with the long-form series caught between a rock and a hard place, between poor air times and promotion and the increasing presence of the iPlayer, if the BBC3 brand isn't stripped from those shows entirely. In the end, there's really no turning back from this one. There's no quick fix that'll help the BBC regain these audiences' trust. It'll have to be earned all over again, and that's not guaranteed. The BBC decided to shutter BBC3, their television beacon towards younger, more diverse audiences, and sully its brand by redirecting it towards increasingly weaker propositions. And as a public broadcaster, not supporting that audience and not being a visible and relevant part of their TV lives will be their biggest mistake. I'm Benzie Johnson Jr. and I'm enthusiastic about television. If you liked this video, which turned out way longer than I thought it was going to, then hit subscribe because I put out new videos multiple times a week. I'll see you for another story and another television adventure next time.